I will quickly touch something so that you can go back home. I don't trust where you live to. So that the rain, the water will not carry your pot of stew. <laughs> so I want to share with you something I titled The Functions of a Right Spirit. The Function of a Right Spirit. So we're going to look at the function. A right spirit and its function. Anyhow you want to put it. I got a lot of messages and calls because of the message I shared on Friday. The cure for what? Depression. I never knew it was that deep. Hello? Were you? I never knew it was that deep. I was just talking. I got a lot of calls from the United States. I got calls. People were, they said, Pastor, you truly helped us. <laughs> I didn't know it was deep. I was just talking. So I want to show you how, now that we are in the second half, why you can miss certain opportunities. The right spirit. Are you ready? The right spirit. Tell your neighbor the right spirit. And after that, we just thank God. We'll be going. Some of you, your eyes is at your, the way you, your eye. Uh, <laughs> Psalm 51 verse 10. Let's go. We are giftings. Please be preparing with me too. We're preparing for the future. Be preparing. Not that when the thing begins to happen, I say, ah, that's a one go house. Oh. <laughs> Some of us will live in the church. That's why we need to have a big church. Must be big and we'll have quarters, 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 quarters. When you are tired, go and sleep. You come out and continue the work. You say, so what are we going to be doing? I will tell you. There will be a lot of, okay, don't worry. Psalm 51. Can we read together? Verse 10, 1, 2, go. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Can we do it again? One, two, go. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is called the Psalms of David. In fact, Go to verse 1 so you will understand it was David. The chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him, after he had gone into Wu Bathsheba. So, go back to verse 10 now. These I needed you to see the history so you can marry it with what he said in verse 10. This thing you see he said here in verse 10 came as a result. This was immediately after he had sinned against God. David, the king of Israel. David, a man who was anointed. David, a man who had seen mercy, grace, upliftment from God had just sinned against God. Not only did he sleep or had sexual intercourse with Bathsheba, the wife of one of his soldiers. Are you with me? And you can understand how the guy got into that sexual sin. You see, someone had said, and I think the person was trying to con contribute to something and to a large extent they might be right in the word he said um, an idol's um, an idol man is a what S satan workshop uh -huh. something like that so when your mind is idol when you are not doing something 
some of us, some of our sisters and brothers who are at home today, smoking, drinking, is as a result of not engaging themselves in things. Because you notice that the moment you start doing something, some of us are on our phone 247 pressing. Some of us got into porn, um, masturbation, because we're truly not engaged in something, you know. And those activities, it's like having an empty land and you don't plant on it. Something definitely will grow. And what will grow, you will not like it, is weed. You know, it's because we are not really busy that made us, you know, got into some friends that now start telling us things about, you know, some of us, some sisters, thank God for grace and mercy, would have walked out of their marriage because out of their idleness, they are, they are not being busy. They got involved in certain relationships that almost cost them their own word, marriage. And because when you wake up, you find, and this happens in some of the areas. For instance, you go to areas where um, this, um, 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 what you call face me, I face you, um, um, the housing estates that are very, this low housing estates where people don't really, you see a lot of housewives that are there, and in the morning, they tie a wrapper, and they just sit down there. You find a guy, too, who does not have a job, and he came from somewhere sitting down. Before you know what's happening, as they are playing, 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 they're playing to something else. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's because they, they, there's nothing. And, you know, that's how um, extramarital affairs begin. That's how a lot of things, that's how a lot of people got into things. I'm telling you through things. I, I, are you? So... David, as a king, the Bible says, the time when kings go to battle. Look at it. The time when it is important for kings to go to battle. Kings are supposed to be in the battle. David decided to be at home. Why? I will tell you. Number one, David felt he has trained enough army so that his armies will be able to handle this can particular battle, which is not bad because there's a level of peace a man of God should have. For instance, bring it to ministry. There's a level of peace you should have as a minister of the gospel that will avail you the opportunity to travel. You see, most of the people who begin ministry hardly, I find this a principle, nobody taught me, but the thing just stayed inside. You know, I just, I was able to pick it. And I heard um, a man of God, um, Dr. David Obwele, said something. And um, um, Ibi Omi also said the same thing. And I heard Bishop Edipo say things like, till date he never leaves his Sunday meetings, no matter what. And that's why he had to get himself private jet. That even if he travels and is there Saturday, he must come back for the Sunday meeting. And David Ibi Omi said he never traveled until the ministry was 10 years. Stabilized. You see, you had people. That you can say, okay, even if I go, Brogbemi can handle Sunday meeting. And it will look as if nothing. You see, I remember when Pastor Chris left for South Africa. As big as Christ Embassy was then, some people could not attend meetings. Because they felt Pastor Larry is too substandard. What can he offer? The man had to come back. Those were the days he taught on the series that you sometimes will find where you find title like beware of dogs and um, you are the salt of the earth and those things. So he came and was correcting those things. Even deacons and deaconess, some of them would not attend services because the man of God was not in the house. Now you can imagine at, a, at that level, it can happen to them not to talk of our level. Some of you will even disappear. Are you with me now? And with all the trainings that they had, some of you feel that service only begins when pastor is around. No. I have my own share from God. These other people have their share from God. God is the one who gives it. But we must understand. So David was like that. He felt I've grown, I've trained these guys. They can handle some battle. That's number one. Number two, David commonized the battle that they were going for. He felt we have this defeated big battles. We have won big battles. So this one is a small nation. These guys will be able to handle it. So he sent them off. Then number three, it is the madness of when you have arrived. Those three things are very important. There are things you can do for me, 
But there are things that only me can do. Izu cannot fast for me. Izu can fast with me. Understand my English. Pastor Chris cannot fast for me. He can fast with me. He can fast on his own and say, I'm praying for my man of God. But there are things that God expects of me to do. So, David was not found in the place when God was expecting him. So, what he did was that he commissioned these guys and said, go and fight. So, he went and began to relax. So, it was in those moments of thinking, being idle as a man. Being idle. Having tasted wine. So, he came out to stroll. And strolling on the roof of his building, he, he, he strolled. He strolled into something. So he found this woman baiting. The, the, the way the house of the king was built was so high that his men built their houses around too. They were not far from him. That's how, that's how, that's to show you the level. I, I I'll teach some of these things on the leadership series so you understand. And sometimes it's very important. So I don't know the method of this woman's baiting. I don't know the method. Because it was a broad day time. I don't know the method. I don't know if she decided to just walk naked. Fra, 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 fra. And the Bible says David beheld her and said, wow, who is this? And called one of his servants and said, that means the servant also saw what he saw. And said, who is that babe? Said, ah, that's the wife of, she says, don't do, go down. Go and call her for me. And called her and David had sexual intercourse with her. Now, that ended there, but the story did not end there. I want you to know that this man was a king and had the spirit of God come upon him. There was a way he felt before now. So the moment he went in with this woman, then the woman came back to tell him that she was pregnant. She was with a child. David felt bad. Like, how would I have done this? How could I in the world have done this? And he began to plan. What do I do? So one of the plans that came to his mind was to execute this guy. But that was not the first plan. The first plan was to make him come, make him drunk, or make him go to his house because he's in the battle. Go to your house so that you can have, to show you that this whole idea that we think is today, the thing, it, it has stayed. So the guy would not, because of the level of loyalty that he has, he said, how can I go and sleep whereas my brothers are in the war? They're in the battlefield. Then I go and be laying with a woman. No, 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 no. Instead, he decided to stay in the palace. And David woke up the next morning feeling that he has gone and saw him. Ah, you didn't go. He said, my Lord, how can I go? My king is here, troubled about the battle. And you brought me to get me an information. And my brothers are there. And you want me to go home and lay with my wife? David saw another level of loyalty. He wasn't bothered because he was the one who taught them all of these things. So he commanded that there be a feast. And he fed this guy with drink such that this guy would go home. And he told him, I give you a day off. Go home. Don't worry about the battle. They'll win. The guy's level of loyalty was another level. Even with the drunk, he was okay. He saw well. He slept at the gate. David woke up and saw that guy and decided to change the plan. The plan now was to invite his chief of army staff to come in, the commander in charge of the battle, and to change it. And he took this guy, he said, take this letter, give it to him. And he took this guy, placed him in front, and that was how he was killed. Now, the reason he was killed was because he was put in front. The training that this guy had was not such that would take him to be in the front. And this is what I tell people in the house of God. Um, when the man of God or by the spirit, you are told to stay with the camera for the now. Do not fight to be on the pulpit because the training you have cannot avail you this. You don't understand. And the battles, the forces that will come against you when you stand here will be much. Will be more than the ones that will fight you when you come on camera. On camera or holding this thing, there's nobody looking at you. The moment you stand here, you become visible. 
Even to all the forces of darkness, they begin to say, okay, this person's name is that. Check his profile. Then they check. Wimby. Check his heart. By the time they check all of these things and they discover that this has always been your dream and not that you were sent, they shoot an arrow. One. Sometimes even the one is half. They give you. You are down. Tell someone, stay where God put you. Tell another person, stay where your anointing carries you. So now, David had slept with Bathsheba and the husband is dead. So, David they gave him the news that the man is dead. And David felt, ah, thank God, my secret is covered. While he was thinking about that, there was a knock on the door. It was his most trusted prophet called Nathan. Nathan, Nathaniel came in and told him, oh, my king, he said, this one I saw you, hope all is well. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he began to, he gave him a, a, a parable and the man answered himself. He said, you know, there was a guy who came in, he had only one goat. And there was a very rich guy, he had many animals. So this rich guy had um, a visitor. And it was late at night. And he took the one goat that this guy had, that he trusted in, and took it from him because he was a man of authority, killed it in, and used it to feed his guest. David rose up from the throne. Who is that? He's in this kingdom. Show me the person and I will remove his head. Death will visit the person this night. And Nathaniel said, you have judged rightly. You are the one. That which you thought was concealed, the Lord has opened up. David sat down. And said, okay, I did not know that I'm the one. Chai. And he said, that which you have done is wrong. But Nathaniel now gave him the verdict of the Lord. He said, the woman is with a child. I leave you before you and God. And Nathaniel could not trespass because he knew that David was a man after God's heart. There are certain judgments I can't even give. I will only stay where the Lord is. So David went out of the place. The Bible tells us what David did straight. He went before the Lord and started to weep. And in weeping, he came about this. There was something he felt in his spirit. He felt dirty. Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever, oh, look up. Let me, let me be a little bit raw. And should I? Mm. Have you ever uh, taken alcohol? And you open your eyes only to discover that, what have I done? What have I done? Have you went in with that lady and you, after the pleasure, you now sat down and you began to ask yourself certain questions. How did I even get to this point? This bus stop, who brought me here? And you feel so dirty, exactly what this guy felt here. He felt dirty, not on the outside, but on the inside. David felt, listen, something is missing. This, how, do you know what it feels like for a man to now think, graduate to the point where you plot for the death of another man? Not just another man, not like an enemy, but one of yours, your own son. Your own son. Your son. How do you think heaven feels about this? Your son, you plotted to kill him. Now he's dead. David felt bad. And in his prayer, he said, Father, his heart now was his problem. He said, Father, create in me a clean heart. I think my problem here is my heart. There is something that happened. How did I allow my heart to grow to that point? We are now. You know, there are certain people who are now, when you see a brother in church who used to be very humble, and all of a sudden, because of a little exhortation, you can now handle the mic or go around the altar or do something. You become careless. Can I tell you something? There is a poncho in your heart. It's a heart problem. There is something about your heart that all of a sudden has changed. Do you know there are certain conversations I cannot get into? I can't delve into it. I can't. That was why this guy was the one who said, I can't bring myself into matters that are too high. 
But can I tell you something? When you now begin to delve into matters that are too hard, I want you to know that the problem is your heart. He said, creating me a clean heart. How was I able to plot the death of this guy? How? I can't imagine plotting this thing. There are some of us, if you sit down now, we, we are done with Friday. We are in the second phase. We're in the second phase. How are you able to process certain evil? Certain, Jesus looked at the Pharisees and said, how do you think these things? Like how? There are certain people you need to look at them and say, how did you come about this kind of thought? Do you know pastor does not love me? How did you get to that level? It's a deep level. It was that level that David got to. His own now got to a point. It was no longer, I desire the lady. It was no longer, I've slept with the lady. It was no longer, she said she's pregnant. It was no longer, what do I do? It was now at the point of, I must kill this guy to cover my evil. There are people like that in the church. They've grown, I, I tell people, there are certain familiarities that are very dangerous. And when you find even your brother or your husband getting to that level, it's time to shift. The only thing is that you can shift, but you are not divorced. He says, come ye out from among them. It's a real level. It's a dangerous terrain. Nobody enters that terrain without consequences following the person. David knew this was not an association of thought. It was a personal thought. But I want you to know, for him to have gotten to that level where he could think that thing, it was a thought, a heart that is now dirty. He said, now, oh God, creating me a clean heart. Not only that, that was the first prayer point. There were two prayer points there. Oh God, he says, renew a right spirit within me. Okay, can we digress a little? Let's in interject this with something. Ezekiel chapter 36. Um, let's read from, I think, from verse 24. 25, 24, 24. Give me 24. Are you learning? Are you learning? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel 36, 24. For I will take you from among the hidden. Say amen. amen. And I will gather you out of all countries. And I will bring you into your own land. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 25. It says, when I have done that, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. I want you to underline the word clean water. Write it in, the, in your own book. Clean water. Because the process by which God will make them clean is through what he calls the clean water. Clean water. Clean water. Clean water. Clean water. Brother Paul, I pray for you in the name of Jesus by this vision I see right now. May you proceed to the bank and may whatever transaction that will take you there profit you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Settled. Then, don't clap, you will distract me. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Sprinkle clean water. Sprinkle clean water. Pastor Chris, lift your two hands. Say, Lord, do for me what you desire for me in this season. Everybody stretch your hands towards. A prayer for one is a prayer for all. I was just teaching and my eyes got open. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. May you have transactions that will never cut short. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I see a lady going to the market to buy baby things. 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 It's a baby girl. Baby girl. Baby girl. Your season has come. Amen. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be what? Clean. The method. Of making you clean is by sprinkling clean water. You shall be clean from all your what filthiness and from all your what idols. Will I cleanse you? These are the things that you are going to be cleansed from. Number one, your what filthiness. Number two, your idols. Those are the two things. Now, uh, David here wasn't talking about David's problem was not idols. David's problem was what? Filthiness. 
Are you with me? It says, then I will cleanse you. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. So the process of making a man clean is by what? Sprinkling clean waters. Sprinkling clean waters. All right? Verse 26. Get to verse 26 quickly. We're going to 27. Hurry up. 26. And watch this now. What was the prayer of David? Creating me a new word, heart. Creating me a word, a new heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now God is saying, after I have sprinkled water upon you and you are clean, I will now, I will now put a new heart also will I give you. Because the problem was filthiness and the worship of idols. I will sprinkle clean water so you will be clean. But the process of you not going back to that thing is that I will give you a new heart. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit. The prayer of David was, Lord, create in me a new heart, O God, and what? Renew a right spirit. So it was a heart, a heart problem and a spirit problem. Now, look at what God is saying in Ezekiel here. A new heart will I also give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart of your flesh and I will give you a heart of what? Flesh. So the problem of David was heart and spirit. The problem you see here now, the solution we see here now is what? Heart and spirit. Verse 27, and I will put my spirit within you and I will cause you to walk in my status because that thing you did was not working in my status. I will now make you to walk in my status and you shall keep my judgment and do them. Now, the whole arithmetic we see in this chapter, in these four verses we read in Ezekiel, is something that can only happen in the New Testament because to give you a new heart and a new spirit entails it is something that is captured in what we call the new creation being born again because if any man be born again he is a new creature are you with me now he becomes go to john chapter 3 verse number 5 john chapter 3 verse number 5 so a new heart will i give you a new spirit will i give you i will also put my spirit within you that's what god says in the whole of ezekiel i will sprinkle water upon you and you shall be clean in john 3 5 he says jesus answered and said verily verily i say unto you except a man be born of what water did you see that now what did he say in ezekiel i will sprinkle water upon you and you shall be what clean so the sprinkling of the water is what john is trying to explain here is a meth method is a methodology of the spirit that i accept a man be born of the water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god the reason why you are a candidate of heaven today and a son of jesus christ is because you are born of the water and of the spirit john 17 17 John 17, 17. I want you to note what he says here now. He said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Can we go back to Psalm 51 verse 10 now? You will see that what David asked for was not, he never asked for a new heart. He didn't say, Lord, give me a new heart. He said, create in me a clean heart. It was not a new heart, but a clean one. Psalm 51 verse 10. Come on, put it there. Creating me a what? A clean heart. But what Ezekiel said is, I will give you a new heart. That is only possible in what we call in the dispensation of salvation. It's only in the New Testament that this is possible. So David was trying to ask God what is only predominantly available in the New Testament. That in the Old Testament, they cannot be born again. But the man felt dirty on the inside. And he asked God for two things. That he would create in him a new, a clean heart, a clean one. The guy felt so dirty. He said, create in me a clean heart. Because I can't imagine myself doing this thing. I stoop so low that this is now what I now do as a king so creating me a clean heart because what i did was filthy it was dirty i wasn't supposed to do that but lord creating me a clean heart you know one thing i love about david his openness of things when the man commits sin he does not say it is not like adam 
is the woman you give me. This guy is straightforward. He said, Lord, I have a problem. Creating me a clean heart. I'm the one that smoked the ego, not the Satan. Satan did not smoke ego. Uh, he says, <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I am the one that drank the beer. Leave Satan. He says, creating me a clean heart. There's a problem with my heart. It is not clean. So he said, creating me. He felt it. Then the second prayer point was, Lord, renew a right spirit within me. So my, 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 my focus is the heart, the right spirit, the right one. There are functions. One of the functions of a right spirit is that you are established in the Lord. You are established in God. You are firmly established in the Lord. You know what the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 20, 20? Believe in the Lord thy God, so you shall be what? Established. You can't be established without a right spirit. A right spirit. And when you are established in the Lord, bearing the right spirit, you know what? You will be able, an ability is given to you to be able to say no when you ought to say no. How can you, you know, you find sisters, start blessing and co, and they sat down and they are plotting about against another sister and you are comfortable, you sat down there you can't stand up and say no. Some people, look up, look up. Some people are on, are on their way to hell. They know. But they don't want to go alone. <laughs> he says, see this, he says, this journey. Not be only me go go. <laughs> Brazil told us those things, you know, those kind of stories back then in school, you know. You know that this thing is wrong. But if they catch you, they will lay you off from school. So you decide that it will not be only me. So the reason you involve people is not that you cannot do it alone. It's so that the pain can be shared. <laughs> there are people like that, even amongst us. They already know that the path they are trailing in life is the path of death. But they want accomplished. They want people. They will be handbag. I will never go alone. Unless you go, I will never let you go. So they will call you. They will text you. Look at this. What do you think? You now begin to bring your own opinion. And from your opinion, they dilute, they dilute your opinion. Maybe your opinion is positive because you still have a right spirit. You are a well established. Well established. A right spirit causes you to see things rightly. You would discern things. Because it's a spirit we're talking about here. It's a right spirit. It will let you know that no, 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 no. You are wrong in this area. Don't go this area. It's one of the reasons why many of us are losing opportunities. And I do not want you to lose them in this second half. Understand something. There are people that are walking the path of darkness and death. They don't want to go alone. Tell your neighbor, you, go, you came alone. You will go alone. When you have issues, if Pastor Joy has issue with Pastor Esther, it's their issues. Eh? Don't say Sister Ada, what do you think? So, Pastor Esther comes to Sister Ada, what do you think? Look at this, look at this. Now, Pastor Joy is outside. She does not know. But she just turns and sees the two of them discussing. She doesn't say, <laughs> in her heart, <laughs> it's my matter. It's my matter. 
The moment you leave Sister Ada, Pastor Joy will now go to Sister Ada. How are you? Something you have never done before. How is your baby? I bought this biscuit for your baby. Say, ah, why? Say, just, that's your baby is very fine. I even want to tell you something. You now pour your own. The, you now, the chief judge, inect chairman, you are going to announce the winner of the election. You now take side. What you do not know is that you are now placing between. What, any side you go to will kill you. There's no peace in this camp. There's no peace in this camp. Instead of you to use wisdom and tell yourself two of them are pastors. They are looking for who to kill. What do you have to say? Ah, this matter is higher than me. Please, both of you should settle yourself. Thank you, eh? If it's because of the biscuit, hold it. <laughs> a right spirit is a pure spirit. And to the pure, all things are pure. A right spirit descends issues. Matters between husband and wife. Be careful. Don't jump into it. Family issues. Don't jump into it. Be careful. Tread with care. He says, renew a right spirit within me. The reason I did that thing was because he said, create in me a clean heart. Then renew. The word renew there means remold, rebuild. That means I have it before, but it has collapsed. Some of you, before, you rather say the truth and face the shame. But now, they know you to be one person who says the truth. But over time, this thing I'm telling you is something that happens over time. You have a brother at home who is always telling you are in the ministry. You better sharp up. All these pastors are deceiving people. You say, mm, please, please, please. Over time, you keep hearing it until you now begin to dwell. You know what is happening? Your right spirit will begin to collapse. They will weaken the fibers and the walls of your right spirit. The best to do is not to hear at all. It's why you will see us in the second half of the year not achieving anything. Because we are going to see something. I'm going to show you. This is very deep. You, you will see. We're just still at the surface. It was this thing that David noticed. How did I get to this level? Okay, I've slept with her. I've committed a sexual sin. How now did I get to the level of murder? The right spirit was the reason for my wrong judgment. The heart was the reason for my murder. So both the heart and the spirit were wrong. The disunity we're talking about amongst us is a product of these two things. The heart and the spirit. The heart and the spirit. A good example. Are you there? Come on here. Are you there? If you're there, say amen. Luke chapter 15, verse 16. Let's look at a few examples. And with that, we'll begin to draw. The first example I want to show you is the example of the prodigal son. The prodigal son. You know the story of the prodigal son? This was the second son. He had an elder brother. The Bible says one day. The younger son went to his father. And said divide your inheritance. And give me my share. First. First. Look up. Look at me. First. That is an evil. You know what it means? It means to kill a man before his death. In your heart, the value you have for your father is no more. 
His existence is your anger. You are trying to tell the man, you don't to stay. Die. Okay, since you know greed, die. Distribute this thing, give me my own and let me go. That's what it means. Because when you check the Jewish culture, most times it, it marries together with what we have in the Eastern culture, in many African cultures. If your daughter, God forbid, comes to you and says, Mommy, give me all your wrapper. What she's indirectly telling you is that you have overstayed. If at 90, you still go for meetings and your son is telling you, Daddy, you still wear this shoe, give me now, we ordinary slippers. He's telling you, Oga, 90, don't do. Come and what? Go. That's the first problem with this boy. Now, the father never saw anything in it. After all, all that I have is still yours. He divided and gave his own. The second one was that this guy never had wisdom. The Bible tells us the life that was in this guy. It was a jaya jaya life. So he went straight and began to party and call his friends. The Bible says he spent it around just living. He was just spending life, spending life. But he never contributed to raising anybody. A man with a wrong spirit will never raise an individual. Will never raise. And anything that will make another person happy is your sadness. If you employ such people in your business, it will go down. All that they are after is their own profit. So long as they are not seeing anything out of it. Remember. We have Apostle Judas. Judas was an apostle. And because Jesus was the good shepherd, a pastor, he, these people say, you know, sometimes I sit down and I, they are supposed to say, Lord, Lord, Jesus was called pastor. The twelve were called apostles. They were supposed to say, Lord, Lord, don't kill us. Let us stay at this level. It was only Peter. You find some of them, they don't take that. They said, what do you want us to do? But Judas was, <laughs> I'm an apostle. Apoju. Judas was an apostle. Judas was a pastor. You can imagine the congregation that Judas will have. They will, they will all be thieves because he will teach them how to be sharp. How not to slack. I'm brother, not be seen as sharp. The guy is sharp. That's Judas. He will have slogans. I'm going to utilize the opportunity because time, no, they waste for time. No, they wait for time. Shy your eye. That's Judas. He's a minister. And he will have a voice. God! If you don't step forward, they will step you aside. <laughs> this is Apostle Judas. I'm sure. I am careful. I'm, what these ministers that use slogans and slangs are not like them. Until finally that thing killed Judas. This guy never invested in anybody. The prodigal son never. Some of us are like that. You will never help a brother, but you will buy him beer. Say, drink and forget your sorrow. You too, Mumu. <laughs> you are drinking. Something must kill a man. You are dying. <laughs> you are dying. The Bible tells us about him. When the money finished, I clear. Man, get sense. He now began to look for a job. Look at this prodigal son looking for a job. A one-time mega boy painting the street red. All the Omasa, Omaka Highway, Omaka Vam Vam Vam, Wom Wom Wom, Omu Sodom and Gomorrah. Omo Shawama, all of them have gone. 
They are no more. Oh, may the Lord deliver us from end time sisters. Amen. End time babes. Amen. Sisters with double decker eye. These are their eyes. Before you see them, they don't see you. They know the measurement of money. He says, My phone is saying a line. Nobody heard me this. And now, one thousand, now they see so. How you tell no? <laughs> Somebody lift your right and say, I'm free. And some of us are bringing them to church. That's my girlfriend. <laughs> The only thing you start from the top is your grave. Every other thing you start from beneath. The only thing they start from the top is grave. A lady is asking you, she's not asking you, how do we build our lives? How do you build them? You say, what do you have? That's from the top. A lady is asking you, what is your account balance? That's from the top. You know what I call those people? Omaka POS. <laughs> personal operating system. <laughs> they have a personal. Are you with me? This guy never helped anybody. All his friends. He gave them drink. They chased women. They ate life until everything finished. The Bible says he took a job. And the job he took was a mundane job. Taking care of pigs swine someone whose father is so wealthy the bible says one day the scarce they've not paid him salary hunger 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 when you see a brother tell you brother don't suffer anything for your boy my job don't be in a hurry some people are going through a process that need to teach them something prison is a rehabilitation center because whatever make you jump fence if they leave you you will jump nigeria so stay this place Stay here and have sense. Some people have gone to prison, came back and became better. Some people grew. They will even tell you when you enter prison. Ah, great, great, love Ask Ibrahim. Ibrahim, you go go the wall. Second wall, you go see my name. Now me they call Lavuv. <laughs> to show you that that one does not need rehabilitation. Kill that one. You give him an opportunity. I'm telling you. If Christ, there are people... Christ could not change them. Christ. Is it Pastor Bina? Christ. They confess Christ. I confess him as my Lord and Savior. They receive the Holy Spirit. Then they still continue in their iniquity. There's no preaching that can change them. Death is the next thing. Because the two important persons that would have helped them, that helped me, is in their life and they are not helped. There's no formula. No formula. No, if you put them in prison, they will think of how to break the burglary. Bad talking is. If they weigh this iron, it is about 20 kg. 28, 5, 8, 5, 8B. 8B meta. Ah, I'm going to warn you. Maybe 30B. For such people, if Judas, oh, don't worry, and he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. He would have filled his belly with the food from swine. You know what that is? It is a wrong spirit. That when you now begin to, before the guy could, he must have been looking at the food and asking himself, they are all animal. We are all animal. We are the same thing. Pig, 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 me. All of us are the same thing. There's no difference. 
for a man to condescend to that point where you now want to feed yourself with food men for pigs shows you the level of the degradation in the spirit of the person the bible says in be part no man gave to him the because he never gave to any man he never invested in anybody all he did was to his own benefit are you with me it was all his benefit what's wrong with you can you hear me there praise god it was all his benefit nobody gave to him nobody god is moving you are growing you see little little people that you can help instead of you to contribute something give somebody something say brother let me help your business don't say ah there's this new sport you say where is that you never hear say never hear madam killer now there are people they die and you are going there to take the boy to the place the boy was about eating food give me this in the message translation he was about eating food meant for pigs the wrong spirit you don't know when you start associating with the people you are not supposed to associate with. You call yourself a believer. Filled with the Holy Ghost. But look at the spot you are always found. Look at the site you always visit on your phone. Something is wrong. He was so hungry, he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop. But no one gave, no one would award giving him anything because he never gave anything to anybody. When you get to that point, sometimes I see some of us, the way we have conversations and the things we say, very poor, very poor. And the problem is the wrong spirit. A wrong spirit, listen, a wrong spirit will make you give wrong judgment. You will give wrong judgment. A right spirit will make you judge right. So that is the story of the prodigal son. You find people, all they think about when they sit down, when they look at the glamour in ministry, God is calling them. If God is calling you, the love for people is no longer there. The reason we stand for hours, ministry, is love for people. But we do it with wisdom. You're not thinking. I remember Reverend Chris had a program, National Stadium, and the stadium was filled up. He said some pastors were seeing boys, see money. To them, what they were seeing was when people take offering, and I, he said he asked himself. They never calculated souls. They never saw salvation of men. It's to show you why they will never fill stadiums. God will never give it to them. Wrong spirit. All you calculate in a program is the money they will make. The money we gave as seed and offering was not up to the diesel. Is that what I sit down to calculate? How much this will buy? How much? So that means it's a business transaction. That's why people see church as business. The money we give to help people daily is more than what you give as offering. But you keep you keep. But that's what people see. Say, boy, that guy get big church. Huh? My prayer and I might just get big church. I could get big cars. That's why I pity for instrumentalists. I'm pitying for you. Even with all the messages I've preached, I'm pitying for you. You are building a life that will waste. You go to the house of God and you place a charge. 
You are doomed. You just do not know. I pity for the generations that will come after. That means it's no longer, it's no longer God, it's now you. Look at your life. You don't have a good shoe. Say, but we are are working for the Lord. Did Did he send you? You carry a man of God's Bible. Then you feel you are entitled to something. Did the man tell you not, that he cannot carry his Bible by himself? You feel you are entitled. There are people with entitlement mentality in the church. They feel someone, the man of God, owes them. It's, it's a wrong spirit. It's a, wrong, it's a product of a wrong spirit. It's a function. You know you were not like that. You know I always tell people, why were you so excited the first time you received the Holy Spirit and you spoke in tongues? But all of a sudden, after some years, you are no longer excited. That was why David said, creating me. A clean heart. Look at the first time you gave 200,000 in the church. You were happy. Then the day you gave 500,000, you began to monitor. What are they using the money for? When you find people gather and they say, what is even my role? My, what are we even doing in this church? Can I tell you something? It is not a problem. The problem is that your spirit is now wrong. There's a wrong spirit. Because if the a right spirit will not function that way. A right spirit will think, how do we grow? It brings me to the second example. This one. This one, the, the, the first, I gave you the first one. The child, the son of a wealthy man. Let's look at the second one, a slave. Because we have considered the first one. The first one is, the, this one is wealthy. The guy has seen wealth. He has tasted wealth. So he knows all the champagnes, all the Hennessy's and all of that. He knows the big life and the big this thing. He knows them. So he can spend even money on those ones. Let's look at a slave. At least you would have thought that someone who served who had no father, no mother, and God now gives you an opportunity that they will have sense. They are the worst. You hardly eat three square meals. You are now in the house of a wealthy man. You are making command. My soup is cold. Woman! But you just came out from a place where you didn't even see food. And you prayed and said, God, give me an opportunity. God now gave you small exhortation. I remember someone would try to help. When it got to the level where I began to hear that when we give food, it's bone we give. In my own house, I could see the degradation, the downfall. That when they give you food, you first check the meat. And you now begin to say, and let me go this market. See what you then give me. Hey! Pastor Ho, sometimes they give me food. I see plenty meat. I take one. You know my son? He does not take meat. He doesn't take fish. Do you know why? He's in Tana. At least nobody taught him. Is God training you because of your part? He will still take meat. But first, reject the things that are not needful. Today is Sunday. One of the things we'll buy when we are going home, me and him, is corn. He loves my food the way it is. He said, Mommy, take this your food. You eat corn. So long as daddy is eating it, he takes it. You'll be drinking milk. Don't worry. They gave you food, you are looking for the meat.
You check fish. No fish. <laughs> you kick the food. Cha. You forgot where you were coming from. You know the problem with you? The wrong spirit. We're going to see it. Pastor Bina does not have problem. He's, you will see it. Let's look at this one now. We have seen the first one. Genesis chapter 16. Let's read from verse 1. Her name was Hagar. Let's see it. Nobody liked me. Nobody loved me. Nobody liked me. Who do you love? Who do you like? Uh, do you show love? Some guys, you know, there was a time it was raining. Yes, show us love now. Show us love. So one day I asked them to, on another show, if you show love, you go die. The guy started laughing. Start with the little you have. Some of you love to receive. But you never give. You come in the congregation of people. You can't even buy pure water. Look at the life of the people that are doing that thing. They are progressing. Look at you. All the things around you are ancient. Old. 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 Your shirt is old. Your shoe. Old. Your phone. Old. Your hair. Old. That's why you are 24. You are developing gray hair. It's not a sign of wisdom. It's a sign of foolishness. It's to show you that you are wicked. This one is better. Can't you see? Well trimmed. Beautiful. Let's go. Sarah. Sarai. Abraham's wife. Hadn't yet produced. Come on now. King James. Why are you doing this? Now, Sarah's Abraham's wife bare him no children, and she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. You see the problem? There are two things I will show you there. She's a handmaid, a house girl. Number two, she's Africa. <laughs> Why are you laughing? There's something about us. Check all the mad, mad guys you see in America, all these stars who draw tattoo, do this one, open this one. Eh? Mayweather, they said, but has 100 cars in his lodge. Some he has not driven there for 10 years. You know what some people say? Ah! Say money is foolishness. You don't have sense. Are, are you selling cars? Are you selling cars? Bill Gates wear polo. If it's an African man that is that rich, he will wear a bada 16, 16. The thing will pack it like this. The problem is not, the problem is that you have a spirit problem. It's not that it's a gift you bought, you are buying. Then I sit down, I'm watching at you. I'm looking. Our African brothers have issues. Africans love to hoard. We're hoarding. We're hoarding things. People will rent, build house, pack money. It's, it's an African, I'm telling you. It's an African, it, it, it's, it, oh, uh, English, Agu, Baru, Salah, Tavina, Akaye. We are mad. This problem. 17 year old boy, I just brought my private jet. Where are you going to? To you, you think you have arrived. Those things is people. I see some of my friends. Some of them, open house. Where this one? Huh? That's a problem. Some of you cannot sleep. Hey, Pastor Jude, don't buy 2023 Jeep. Hey! Pastor Jude, why I help you already? No, me lay hands on him. Hey! And the Holy Spirit said, My son. Holy Spirit, hold on. I have peace. There's nothing I enjoy like my peace. Peace of mind. I'm so at peace. Be wrong, you know. But I'm half peace. You can't buy this peace. Hi! You know one thing? When God moves you, oh, it is beautiful. 
He makes all things beautiful. He, he makes things so beautiful. It will come. But just don't overrun. Be flowing with him. Everything rhymes with your age, rhymes with your time, rhymes with everything. It's just good. I just showed you. Those, I don't know why you're laughing. Her, she's a slave and she's from where? Africa. Let's watch. She's a house girl. She lives with a wealthy man. The wife is wealthy. And she's not the only one. The Bible says they had over 400 slaves living with them, men. Born, the Bible says these people were born in the house of Abraham. 400. Not the ones he brought. Because the ones that gave birth to these ones, that he, they, was born in his house, 400. So he brought the people that gave birth to these ones. So apparently, maybe this is one of the daughter of the woman he took. So they were, they were okay. But remember, she's a handmaid. In fact, handbag. She's a slave. Living in this house. So she has seen wealth. Abraham was so rich. Sarah was so blessed. Let's see her story. You would have taught this kind of person would be blessed. So amongst all of them, she's not the only one. There's something about this one that the woman liked, Hagar. But you know one thing? It is only God who considers inside. Man considers outside. Her self-service. Where the man? Ma, you have a comma. I get a book. Mommy, don't fall. <laughs> hey, hey, over the river Jordan. Hey, we shall leave. Eh? Hey, guy. She bought Sarai off. Verse 2. She bought Sarai off. Listen, if that woman was from Mesopotamia, if I didn't mean she was from Turkey, if this guy was from Turkey, she wouldn't have behaved like this. Watch this. Verse 2. And Sarai said unto Abraham, in, somebody say, bed talk. It's a bed discussion. This is inside, on the bed. My husband. Behold now, the Lord had restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. Is a maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah. Don't think it was immediate. The Bible is just reducing the story. Because if it's too much, we won't be able to carry it. If he had told Abraham that night and he agreed, that means there's something with Abraham. Abraham, in 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 bad, but <laughs> uh, uh, it means that Abraham. Okay, <laughs> why do you think like this? Let's go to verse three. And Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar. Her maid, the Egyptian, they kept telling us. After Abraham had dwelt 10 years in the land of Abraham and gave her, not as a girlfriend, to her husband, Abraham, to be his. Because it was important I show you that. If it was a concubine, it would have reduced. But the moment her bride price was paid, she became a second wife. The African spirit started. Chimere mo bio ma e mbe mne we go lila nya. Chimere mo bio ma e became her song. All the garment of a handmaid, she dropped it. She probably gave to other ones that were cook and cleaners. Don't address me like that. When I come, say, Mother. Everything she saw with Sarai. Kneel down and greet me. Oh, God, Madam. Uh, uh, the people will be like, Hey, this is your reign. is terrible. <laughs> you have not even entered. They just paid your bride price. Sarai began to observe. She suddenly changed. The problem was the spirit. Poverty. They know they pray I'm out. You don't cast out poverty. Eh? The mindset of, the one you cast out is the spirit. When the mindset of poverty is instilled in a man, even soap cannot clean it. Hypo can't wash it because it's a mindset. You don't cast out wickedness. You change it. You change it. 
419 cannot be cast out. That a man is cunning, you don't cast it out. You change. David knew what he was asking. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. There's something with my spirit. They never knew that this girl had this thing in her locker. She kept it. She's bringing it out. She became a wife. Verse 4. The Bible tells us in verse 4. And he went in unto Hagar. She waited. And she conceived. Ebela. Emunteki. Barubakua. Abba Deleaza. Ementebe. Then wait until you buy your first car. Your landlord don't see where. No, you get a house, oh. You just buy a car. People can no longer rest. The Bible says when she saw, when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Why? What you could not give for Oga for 20 something years, I've done it. You are nothing but a wood. She doesn't have to say it. It was in her eyes. The way she looked. Why? Is it not Oga? I've seen Oga now. It's called see finish. There's nothing. The way some people behold and look at some people and reply them is a sign. It's a sign. What the real owner of the house could not do, she's doing, is a spirit. Is the wrongness of her spirit. She despised Sarah. Sarah, if Sarah talks, she says, Abegi, barren woman. Eh? From you, a housemaid from Egypt. Verse 5. And Sarah said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon me. You know, women, they are this. Now then they start her. You say, Let my wrong. I love this one. Say, you are not, Let my wrong be upon me. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. The question is, how did it, how did it concern Abraham? May the Lord judge the two of us. She started crying. Abraham said, Eh? I was on my own. Oh. Now you go pay in bright price. Watch the next verse. But Abraham said unto Sarah, Behold, he didn't say my wife. He said thy maid is in thy hand. Which means it's not my wife. It's your maid. It's you that brought her. She's still in your hand as a maid. The title of a wife I did not give. You coronated her. Until the head makes you, brings you up. Every other bringing is a falling ground. You will go down. When you make yourself who you are not, shame is being built. It's a matter of time. He says she's still a maid in your hand. Anything you like, do. I don't even give a damn if she's pregnant or not. Do to her as it pleased thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Even at old age, the thing did the woman body. <laughs> she, she, she combined all the anger of her to give me and, and you coming to collect. Right? <laughs> hey, my, my wonderful bed. You are rolling, rolling, rolling. You are telling me you are pregnant. She dealt with her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The only people that can add this thing where is Nigerian African magic. She, you need to bring patience or so called she will deal with you. <laughs> hey, <Otak>. Celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Nobody told the girl. The Bible says she fled, she did not walk. She said, hey, <laughs> Because she thought my foundation is my ogre. When ogre, 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 can't get out of the Bible says she fled. Now she's pregnant. The man did not look for her to show you that my love is after that one. This is the first 
Every other is a sinking ground. As long as Sarah is not the one going. Other men, weak men, that are clamoring for children, eh, that do not know the covenant of God, will say, don't treat her like that. You know, she's carrying my child. Be careful now. Be careful. Abra- not Abra- Abraham is nine. <laughs> this is nine. Nine said, listen, she's in your hand. She's a maid. Deal with anything you like, do that. And the man was going out. And uh, the woman said, eh, uh. When he dealt with her, she fled. I like the English. There's someone. She fled. She fled. Uh-huh. When she fled, he remained God. Verse 7. And the angel. <laughs> I like this. He remained God. Let's see if God is by us. Because some of you are fasting and crying unnecessarily. I've labored in this ministry. Let's see God. What I've done in this life. All the evangelism rain beat us. Let's see God. <laughs> Let us now see God. Because you fail to understand that you have a bad character. You have an attitude problem. Your spirit is not right. And you want heaven to, jo- to support you. No way. No way. Heaven does not support a man who is not pure. To the pure, all things are pure. It's only man. That will support you. And it's a matter of time. I've told you. Light gossip one week. Two, heavy gossip two weeks. After two weeks. They'll tell you no more gist. Gist lover will look for another gist. Because they must survive. Some of you are pity. You are pitying. You are pitying people. Who, are, who, who, who is carrying judgment on them. You say pity I'm now. And God is saying. Look, this is God now. The angel of the Lord found her. By a fountain of water. In the wilderness. Emma Wemoy. She didn't go to a life place. She ran into a wilderness. She's an African girl, true, true. She went to sing, You are my African queen. Girl of my dream. In the wilderness. If Lion had killed you, she went to the wilderness, not sat down like Sister Luchi, sitting down now, putting her hand there. Give me a keyboard. Akuamo. Wanuno. Nenanamo. Because they know I don't have parents, I'm a maid. Biko, 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 bo. They will tell you continue season two. You start your sister crying. Biko le no mo agwaga tu bumo. Give baba mwere. Then the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to shore. The angel found her there, where she's singing a chorus that nobody gave her. You are changing song. You are changing it. Oh, 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 oh. Happen, Dimozi. Focus on yourself. You are wrong. You are wrong. Be the first to tell yourself, I am wrong. I didn't get it right. Then God will come down to your aid. You can't disres- despise your boss's wife. She did you good. She helped you. She clothed you. She gave you a husband. You despise that because you are pregnant. Now, all pregnancy is from God. But you fail to understand the dealings of God with a man. God has his dealings with, with Sarah. And the God of Sarah will come for you. He's here. Verse, look at it. And the angel found her. Verse 8. And he said, hey God. Look at what he called her. He didn't call her Sarah's, her Abraham's wife. He said, Sarah's maid. You are a maid. Heaven recognizes you as a maid. When they will call you and say, Isu, Obina's maid. Cynthia, Obina's choir. Amami in a go. Give up a bang with it. Hey, hey. He says, Sarah's maid. Where are you coming from? And where are you going to? And she said, I flee. From the face of my mistress, Sarah. The angel did say, what did you do? Verse 9. Because all things are naked before God. And the angel didn't say, what really happened? He, oh. 
Chuku manso Bialele mo Chuku manso Bialele mo Adimime Ogam chupuru mo Chuku manso Bialele mo Mwambu nafo Agona agoya Oga un Mwambu Celebrate God. Wow. Gaun. You didn't do well. Tell yourself the truth. I didn't do well. Look at the angel. And the angel does say to her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. She was she like that before? No, sir. Something changed. Go and submit. Become, become a slave again. Don't say because you share your God. You are now equal with her. Submit yourself. That we pray on the same mountain. Does not mean the same God called us. That we share the same grace. Does not mean the same anointing upon us. There is a God that oversees every man. The callings are different. The places are different. Submit yourself. You see small vision in your dream. You think you are a prophet. The judgment of life do not come in the dreams. You lay hands. One of the things that give us rank in the spirit are the scars we bear. The many times we are afraid for people that did not get healed and they registered them. That they even tried. Go back. Many people need to go back because of little exhortation. We prayed for you. Remember when you came and you were dying. Remember when you came, you were broke and you were poor. Now you feel you have an opinion to air. This is God. If all the song you are singing is to God, Chuku Onye Dielu, it's this God. Shebi is this God. He has appeared. And he's telling you, Sarah, God didn't go to Sarah. You did well. You did well. Because that thing where that girl do, small, nine set and do what, Poshwam? You did well. That is pride. That is arrogancy. That is insult. And you don't stay in the house. The only thing is that you are still redeemable if you can go back and submit yourself. Some of you need to submit your mind because God has blessed you. You need to submit yourself. Your prayer time needs to be submitted. Go back to the place where he met you. How did you hide? Go high. It is the wrongness of your spirit. God forbid the day that I will go higher. He said, Go back and submit. She left. She got it. Verse 10. The Bible says, And, and the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Eh, I will do all of that. Uh huh. 11. Uh huh. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with a child, and shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Yes, but this affliction is a personal affliction. It's not an affliction from God. It's not an affliction from your boss. It's an affliction from you. The child will be great. Yes, and he will be a wild man. You know why he's going to be wild? Because you. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand shall be against him. He shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Why? Because look at the bitterness from the mother. Hey guy is Egyptian. This is the spirit of the Egyptian. They will be against everybody. Everybody will be against them. He said, but go. She went back. She stayed. But you can imagine. Every little thing. She said, I know they don't like me in this house. I just came back. Not because I really want to come back. If it was not God. Go to chapter 21 from verse 1. Now. God now remembered his own. Ele. Sante Because you think that God has forgotten her. God now remembered. 
Verse 21, chapter 21, verse 1. Genesis 21, verse 1. The Bible says in Genesis 21, verse 1. And the Lord, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2. Sarah now is pregnant. Glory to God. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God has spoken. Can I prophesy on someone? I declare over your life, your set time for exhortation is now. Every word of prophecy shall find fulfillment. Are you learning? The function of a right spirit. The function. That was what Sarah was telling God every day. Ah. Sarah was crying, crying every day. But now God has answered. Drop to verse 9. Drop to verse 9. Because of time. I showed you the wealthy son. I'm showing you a slave. See the character. Verse 9. And Sarah saw the son of Haggai, the Egyptian, which he had born unto Abraham, mocking. Do you know how old this boy was? History tells us. From the time she conceived and gave birth to the time that this one was born, it was 13 years. So this boy was 13. Give me the message translation. She taught the boy. You are the first son. If that boy talk, beat him. If your mama talk, push him. It's your right. That man is your father. There are people that should not come into your world. Trouble is their perfume. One day, Sarah saw the son that Hagar, the Egyptian, born to Abraham. Poking fun at her son Isaac. The boy was walking. He said, see, see, leg. <laughs> and Sarah saw. I even allowed you in my house. Accommodated you. Gave you my food. Sent you to school. You are laughing at my son. The woman. You reminded the woman. Of what it took to have this boy. And she took her decision. And this time. Not even God. Could change it. Go back to King James. Not even God could change it. This was the second chance that God gave her. She now not only trained herself to be evil, she trained her seed. There are people you don't give. This is, was that not what happened? If God had given Satan the opportunity to forgive him and stay in heaven, by now the throne of God would be missing. All the stars will be missing. <laughs> the sun will be missing. God will say, ah, where is the sun location? The angel in charge is that rock and rod. <laughs> Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, she went there, cast out the first time she dealt, this time around, cast out. The same word we're using, using to cast out devils. He said, cast out this bond woman and her son. For the son of this bond woman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. This time around, it didn't go down well with Abraham. You know why? The place of a father. He had come to see the boy grow. It was better. I don't know what he was like in the womb. Say blood. But now, 13 years, is my blood too. It did go down well. But heaven, remember the prayer she prayed. He said, let God be the judge between two of you. Two of us. So now God is coming to judge. Somebody celebrate Jesus. When they cast you out and you go fasting, heaven will judge. Watch it. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because not of the lady, of his son. What will he feed? 
What will he be like? How will he school? He thought of it as a father. God came. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on this matter. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. You will break me. You will mold me. You will use me. Are you still there? Oh, he came. And God said unto Abraham, God came. God came in. God came in. God came in. Remember, this guy is a friend of God. God came. Abraham! Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the boy. And because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah has said unto her, hearken unto her voice, for it is in Isaac that thy seed shall be called. God came to affirm me to him. Forget this one. That's your son. That's a mistake. And mistake don't come into the inheritance of sons. You read the book of Psalms. It said the sinner shall not stand in the judgment of the righteous. That's a mistake. When God comes to in your life, he separates your mistake from your calling. From the true inheritance in your life. Yes, I know you have made mistake here. But this your mistake has no bearing here. Sad, cast this one out. You were able. My God, you were faithful. You were glorious. Oh Lord, you are faithful. What a privilege and in honor to worship at this is this is what he's telling us. Verse 20, verse 13. I'm rounding off, it's my last scripture. And also of the son of the bondwoman, I will make a nation because he's thy seed, not because of anything, because he's your seed, I will bless him. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. No land, no gift, only bread and water, communion. May the Lord be with you. Why? Because the night before God has spoken, he has told me he will take care of the boy, not the girl, but the boy. He said, go. So, the woman does not know that you are dealing with a covenant man that can have appearances and encounters anytime. You think it, the matter ends in church. God visits me. He talks. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. May your character not bring you to the place of shame. talking and the child and sent her away and she departed and wandered in the wilderness of what is this woman and wilderness are you a hunter africa <laughs> land is going around wilderness maybe she wants to become an agent verse 15 and the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Water finished. The boy is thirsty. So she sent the boy under a tree. Why? He's telling us. And she went and sat her down. Over against the wood. That same thing she did. Again. For she said. Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him. And lift up her voice. And wept. Singing that her song again. Igekwe 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 no wow oh god look at the way they are treating us if not for me remember that boy some of you are crying stupidly foolish prayer foolish tears you didn't do well just admit you didn't do well they're telling god Ah, 
Hakuni ne mwere ne luwa o sinagi. Yanu were mo were mo were mi. And God, the woman is here. Oh, where he am where he nello wa o o sinagi. The Bible says, and God heard the voice of the lad. The boy was not crying. That stupid woman, God did not hear her voice. Is the boy? Why? The seed of Abraham. A covenant I made with him that that boy will survive. So, if this boy cries, I must answer. He heard the voice of the blood. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, Why let thee? Why are you crying, Hagar? Me, it's a like Guru Konye. Because from Hagar, the Hebrew word is Hagar. Fear not For God I heard the voice of the lad Where he is The location is not the same You sent him to die Abby. It was because you separated him that I heard his voice You never know he needed the separation So I can hear his voice the Bible says in Genesis chapter 29, when Jacob was separated, then he wrestled with a man. Separation, I heard his voice. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. Don't let him, don't be afraid. Uh huh. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water, which means the well of water was by her side, but she didn't see this is the consequences of having a wrong spirit opportunities will be passing you will not see it you will pray today and say lord help me develop this spirit that i will see there are people who will come in they will say ah this ministry is great but some of us are in the ministry and our eyes are closed that we don't see second half of this year father open my eyes that i may see there is water around me there's opportunity around me there's favor around me but i'm not seeing it stand on your feet i'm done where am i 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 without a right spirit you can't see opportunities you can't see I pray for you every day how come some of us don't know that our hindrance is a wrong spirit that we have we developed it you are going to pray this prayer is a prayer of tears Lord help me that this second half let the prayer of my man of God not be in vain cause my eyes to be open that I will see I need a man I need a man in my life the man is around Lord cause the eyes to see I didn't come here to lay hands on you no sir today we've done it now it's time to talk to your God lift up your two hands talk with him right now where am I 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 